2024 rookie class could be better than the 2023 rookie class. It could completely alter the trajectory of your dynasty team. So let's look at the talent that's coming up in this class sooner than you think. Let's start with Caleb Williams. Everybody knows who Caleb Williams is. QB out of USC. He's a junior. He's 6'1", 215 pounds. He was a five-star QB coming out of high school, and he was the number two ranked QB in that 2021 class. He took over for Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma, and then he transferred. He followed his coach Lincoln Riley when he went to USC. He won the Heisman last year. So again, you're talking about maybe the best player in college football. Last year, he was 67% 67% accurate. He had 4,500 yards and 42 touchdowns. His accuracy percentage was 76%. He had 1.8%. 1.8% turnover-worthy throws. He's like the two opposite in that in that regard. Um, his sack rate was 5.3%. I mean, really what gives Caleb Williams like absolutely top in dynasty value is going to be his rushing upside. He had 58 attempts for 624 yards and 10 touchdowns, which is the actual rushing total that excludes the negative yards from sack. Cause you know, in college they include sack yards. This excludes that he had 624 yards and 10 touchdowns positive his passing grades. When you're looking at his passing grades overall, he was seventh in the country. His passing grade was 90.1 in the short game. He was sixth in the inter- intermediate game. He was fifth In the deep game, he was 21st. So obviously very, very good in the short and intermediate game and also very solid in the deep game as well. He's projected to go first overall in the NFL draft right now. This is something that we all know. If he doesn't for some reason, he will go early first round. Um, Unless somebody is brain dead when you're talking about the Dynasty rookie draft next year, he's going to go 101. I mean, in Dynasty Superflex League, um, he... He could potentially jump into the first round of Superflex startups as early as next year. Yep. In fact, I think a lot of people would, would put him there. Our comp for him, potentially Jalen Hurts, but like a slightly worse runner and a better passer. We're not we don't really have a good comp for him, honestly. Um, he's slightly undersized for a QB, but he is bigger than Kyler and Bryce and he's clearly dynamic enough to make it work in college. So we're not super worried about that. He's a very good passer and he has an incredible ability to extend plays. He's got the longest time to throw among starters in 2022 when he can't find an open receiver. He's a good enough runner and can force a defense to remain honest. So Caleb Williams, again, completely elite. He's going to be at the top of next year's class, almost surely, especially in dynasty Superflex leagues. The next guy is the guy we're hoping we're landing with the Colts here. Yeah. Marvin Harrison jr. Honestly, it'd be awesome to see the, uh, uh, next generation of the Harrison family to, to be, you know, Jim Mercer is on that one. Hey, Hey, we got to get Marvin Harrison jr. Man. (laughs) Wide receiver out of Ohio state, six, four, 205 pounds, a a specimen really physically, uh, from a recruiting perspective, he was a four star wide receiver. So not like, not the elite of the elite, but but a good prospect. Flash in 2021 in the Rose Bowl um, for Ohio State after being stuck behind Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and Jackson Smith and Jigba all season. And then he broke out as Ohio State's wide receiver one as a sophomore, a true sophomore, after JSN got injured in 2022. In 2022, he had 1,200 receiving yards, 14 touchdowns on 77 receptions, 3.18 yards per route run (laughs) stupid (laughs) that's dumb that is ridiculous come on and 4.2 yards after the catch per reception and look adjusted dominator rating 35.28 percent his breakout age at 20 years old even like just 20 my goodness this guy is going to be an elite wide receiver prospect next year i would if i were to bet i'd say he goes top 10 in the nfl draft next year i hope the colts grab him in the top five yeah early first rounder uh it's Top three picks in uh, rookie draft in Dynasty is Should where be. we would expect that he'll go. Uh, I, I think 102 is what we'd bet on for sure. He's basically, if you were to compare him to anyone, he's pretty, he's a better Michael Pittman Jr. Yes, and much better. Elite. Again, same thing. We're, we're not huge into comparisons, but I mean, from a physicality perspective, like that's his size and that's his ability. And, and he's, he's just a glorified version of that. Other notes, look, all the pedigree in the world with his dad being Marvin Harrison. And while while that does, you know, contribute to him being a good prospect because it's in the blood, it's in his family, like he is talented in his own right. Ohio State likely wins a national championship if he isn't knocked out of the game. He's your typical big body X wide receiver lining up out wide 86% of the time, yep. extremely sure handed with a drop rate of only 3.8% and a contested catch percentage of 60% in 2022. That's really promising for an NFL prospect. Relied upon heavily by Ohio State, which is again 3.08 adjusted yards per team pass attempt. And even with consistent double coverage, he's still 
still able to cause chaos in opposing secondaries. He won't wow you on the ground with his yards after the catch ability. That's just going to be a little bit of a knock on his ability as a wide receiver. But again, as a guy lined up on the outside, maybe more of a deep, like we're excited what he can do in the NFL. He's already a top three dynasty wide receiver once he steps in. Yep. Drake May, another QB out of North Carolina. We all know who he is. Um, he really only has one year starting after Sam Howell. Um, he was sitting behind Sam Howell for a season. So after Sam Howell went to the NFL, he finally got to start in 2022. Um, he threw for 4,300 yards and 37 touchdowns. Uh, accurate percentage, 75%. Turnover worthy throw of 2.5%. A sack rate of 7%. He also had 77 rushing attempts for 899 yards and seven touchdowns. Not to mention wow. 535 of those yards were after contact. So talk about a guy that will put his shoulder down and run into you. He is very good. He's good in the short game. He's ninth in college football in short game accuracy. Intermediate, he was sixth. And deep, he was first. This guy is good. He has nice touch on his deep ball he's projected to go it's like a better will levis yes he's projected to go in the early first round probably a top five pick and then rookie drafts he's going to go in the early first here as well probably just not the 101 this is going to be a very top heavy draft next year because you're going to have three guys that are honestly like in different classes could go 101 he is you know a justin herbert daniel jones love child from a comp standpoint he's got the passing of justin herbert and the rushing of daniel jones um He's got prototypical size. He's very skilled as a passer. And again, he's a very powerful runner for a QB. That's going to give him a ton of fantasy upside. And then you've got two at the top of here. You've got two dual threat quarterbacks like that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then we also up top here in our top four, we've got a second Ohio State wide receiver in Amika Egbuka, who as a junior is 6'1", 206 pounds. And he's a slot wide receiver. And that's really exciting in fantasy, especially when you're looking at him long term as a dynasty prospect aspect you're excited to see that he's probably going to be a safe wide receiver going into this NFL draft in 2024. A five-star recruit, five-star wide receiver, number one overall in the 2021 class going into college. So Igbuka touched the field for Ohio State infrequently while being stuck behind, again, the same guys, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, JSN, and then alongside Marvin Harrison Jr. breaks out because of the injury of JSN their sophomore season. In 2022, he had 1,100 receiving yards, 10 touchdowns, on 74 receptions, 2.98 yards per route run and 7.1 yards after the catch per reception. That's what we love to see from a slot wide receiver. He doesn't get a bunch of depth of target, but he gets a lot of yards after the catch. NFL draft proje projection is going to be probably the mid first round. I think his ceiling isn't going to be as high as Marvin Harrison Jr., but again, he's going to be very safe and definitely a need for some team in the NFL that they'll be willing to take a shot on him in the first round. If you want to compare him to someone, Honestly, JSN, despite them being teammates and JSN not playing in the NFL yet, they slot really receiver, uh, slot about the same receiver. size. Yep, that can be a wide receiver same one system. in their offense. Yes. Yeah. Despite all the hype behind Mar behind Marvin Harrison Jr., Igbuka isn't far behind in regard to uh, his statistics. And even though they're built a lot differently as receivers, th there still is there's there's a lot of pluses to Emika Ibuka in his own right as a yes, prospect sirs. compared to Marvin Harrison Jr. He's lethal after the catch, like we already said. 7.1 yards after the catch per reception. Out of the slot, 67% of his snaps in the slot. He's able to play mismatches against opposing defenses. And the emphasis that will be placed on Marvin Harrison Jr. should allow for Igbuka to have a very productive, very good season against less intense coverage. And that may even help him help boost his draft capital going into the 2024 NFL draft class as well. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, if you like what you're hearing here, you want more rookie coverage all around the clock, you want our full rankings, you want potentially a team blueprint for your dynasty team, flockfantasy.com slash domain is where you can find that. When you use our code domain and when you use our code on the website, you get 30% off the site and our code also gives you exclusive access to all of our content. So like I said, if you want to join the community and you want, again, you can get a team blueprint. Even with the monthly mother flocker tier, we'll do a flash sale this week. If domain. You if you join the monthly mother flocker tier under code domain, then you get a team blueprint. Like I said, flockfantasy.com slash domain. We'd love to have you over there. And our fifth guy on this list is going to be Brock Bowers. Brock <laughs> Bowers, everybody knows who he is. Tight end out of Georgia. He's been regarded as probably the best tight end in college football since he was a freshman. So you're talking about last year having a very well-rounded, a very good, a very talented tight end class. Brock Bowers would have been the best tight end in that class, and it's not really close. In 2021, he had 882 yards and 13 touchdowns. In 2022, 942 yards and seven touchdowns. He had that on 63 receptions. He had 2.37 yards per outrun. Right? I adjusted dominator rating. 
twenty three percent in twenty twenty one, twenty one percent in twenty twenty two. His breakout age was eighteen and a half years old. Oh my gosh! He's going to be a mid first rounder, most likely in the NFL draft, uh, in rookie drafts, in dynasty rookie drafts. Probably also going to be an early to mid first rounder as well. Um, he's slightly undersized for an NFL tight end. He functions more as a wide receiver than a tight end in most situations. Think Dalton Kincaid in that aspect. Fantasy football. Yep, and, and he ran a route on 92% of his pass plays in 2022. He's insanely athletic. He's a fantastic catcher of the ball. He has a only a 4% drop rate and a 76.5% contested catch rate. He spends about half of his time in the slot. His yards per out run, like I said earlier, was 2.37 yards per out run. That's insane. We're looking forward to Brock Bowers coming in and immediately bolstering a tight end landscape and dynasty that is in need of some serious top end talent like Brock Bowers. Yeah. And at six, we're going to have our first running back off the board in 2024 and Travion Henderson. This isn't a year where we're going to have a Bijan Robinson. No. It, it is going to be a little bit less of a uh, talented running back class, I, I would say. But Travion Henderson, Ohio State running back, junior, 5'10, 212 times. To- pounds and a BMI of 30.42 five-star running back number one running back in the 2021 class and, and we're really excited to see what he showcases in an Ohio State offense that no longer has CJ Stroud this year so they may have to lean on the run game a little bit more two-year starter for Ohio State already only played eight games in 2022 due to injury though so it was kind of a bit of a blow-off year if you're looking at him as a prospect in 2021 he had 1200 yards as a true freshman and 15 touchdowns on 180 attempts. That's 6.82 yards per carry. In 2022, he only had 5.4 yards per carry, however, took a step down for 576 yards and six touchdowns on 106 attempts. So more attempts, less efficiency. We want to see that efficiency go up again if he's going to be a highly sought after prospect in the NFL. Receiving upside, 312 receiving yards, four touchdowns on 27 receptions. That's 11.5 yards per catch. And in 2022, seven point yards per catch on 28 yards and a touchdown on four receptions. His adjusted dominator rating was 21.36% in 2021 and 15.29% in 2022 with a breakout age of 18.8 years old. Again, that's what you want to see from a guy from from a running back, especially Uh, if you want to kind of guess where he's going to go in the NFL draft. I'd say no earlier than the late first. I would probably bet early day two if I were a betting man. Um, mid first round if you're looking at him in dynasty from the 104 to the 108 if you want to compare him to someone think damian pierce-esque but better better. kenneth walker maybe but i would say maybe even a little bit more receiving upside because of his yards per catch in his in 2021 his freshman year not a pass catcher partly due to his skill set again primarily but also due to the cast of weapons on the Ohio State offense so there should there could be something that he just hasn't been able to showcase there he's athletic enough to contribute in the receiving game but the majority of his skill is going to come from his north south rushing style where he has 4.31 yards after contact per attempt yeah Absolutely. We're going to start flying through these guys here. Raheem Sanders, Raheem Rocket Sanders, you know who he is. Running back from Arkansas. He's a junior. He is 6'2", 242, which is crazy size for a running back like that. His BMI is 31. So the dude's going to be a workhorse back in the NFL. He split time in his freshman year. He's a full-time starter in 2022. In 2021, he had 578 yards and five touchdowns. And in 2021, he also had 109 receiving yards and a touchdown. In 2022, he had 1,400 yards on the ground and 10 touchdowns. And he had 248 receiving yards and two touchdowns. So not not the highest upside receiving back you're going to find. However, again, the workhorse size and the production on the ground is what's going to be his selling point. He's going to be a late first round, probably early day two pick in the NFL draft, much like Travion Henderson as well. So they're going to go in about the same spot and they're both going to go probably in the middle of these dynasty rookie drafts as well. Um, He's a sturdy do it all type of running back. He's skilled on the ground. He forces a lot of missed tackles. He has a lot of yards after contact. He has good vision. He has good ability to cut back as well. So we're excited about him. Yeah, Leonard Fournette, probably a good comp for him too, which is pretty good for the NFL. Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas, is going to be our guy here at eight, a junior, 6'1", 172 pounds, so a little bit lanky here. And uh, he he's going to be playing primarily uh, on the outside as a wide receiver. Four-star wide receiver recruit, recruit two-year starter at Texas, including an extremely impressive freshman breakout season where he put up 981 yards and 12 touchdowns on 62 catches, 1.91 yards per route run, and 5.5 yards after the catch per reception. And then he puts 
up a little bit less production in 2022 with 757 yards on 59 receptions. Adjusted dominator rating of 36.27% in 2021 and 24% in 2022 with a great breakout age again as a true freshman at 18 years old. Probably estimating that he also will go mid to late first round. It's not the end of the world if he goes second round. If you were to compare him to a wide receiver in the NFL right now, we'd probably lean Hollywood Brown. Maybe even a field stretcher could get some nice target volume if placed in the right situation in the NFL. And um, it average ducks to target of 17.6 though. So if I were a betting man again, I'd say he's probably going to be primarily a field stretcher. Yeah, he did have a lot of drops last season, so we're keeping an eye on that as well. Um, and he yeah. really does need a big season to improve his draft stock a lot. So we'll kind of see how he does. He's he's really fun to watch, though, to be honest with you. Malik Neighbors yeah. is going to be next. Wide receiver out of LSU. He's a junior. He's six foot two hundred pounds. Uh, he was a four star wide receiver coming out of high school. He shared a wide receiver room with Keishawn Boutte. He took over as the wide receiver one after Keishawn Boutte got hurt in twenty twenty one. He had four hundred and thirty yards and four touchdowns in twenty twenty two. He had a thousand seventeen yards and three touchdowns nice. on seventy two receptions. He he had 2.44 yards per route run. Uh, his adjusted dominant ring in 2022 was also 27%. His breakout age was 19 years old. He's projected to go in the mid first round of the NFL draft, similar to some of the guys you saw go in that range this year. He's also projected to go in the mid late first round in dynasty rookie drafts as well. Um, he's slightly on the smaller side, which isn't ideal for wide receivers. Um, but again, he kind of has a hybrid alignment. He's we're going to work out wide some. He's going to work in the slot some. So it makes him pretty versatile. Um, he took over in the LSU offense after the injury to Keishon Boutte. He really showcased his skills of possession wide receiver there as well. He's not going to score a ton of touchdowns, as you saw in this last year's production at LSU. But he doesn't really drop any passes. So it makes him a pretty safe wide receiver. There's going to be a team that takes a, a bet on him in the mid first round of the NFL draft next year, barring something interesting this year so yeah at 10 we're gonna have trey benson a running back coming out of florida state and and this is really when it becomes a toss-up at the running back position there's gonna be a lot of guys that rise a lot of guys that fall he's 6'1 223 with an okay bmi at 29.4 four-star running back going into college spent two seasons at oregon only appearing in nine games he had to transfer to florida state and became a full-time starter in 2022 where he had 994 yards and nine touchdowns with 6.4 five yards per carry and then 11.8 yards per reception which is good but he also only had 12 receptions so his receiving upside's a little bit in question but there could be something there again with his efficiency in the receiving game breakout age of 20 years old which is not ideal that's not really what we want to see but again there still could be something there with him if you're con to compare him to someone in the nfl it would probably be Ramondre stevenson with his receiving game efficiency and just the way that he runs the ball. So, um, look, I, I would say he probably goes late day two at, at best is, is where I would guess. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking as well. 11 here. We're going to have Quinn Ewers. Everybody knows who Quinn Ewers is because he was the highest rated quarterback prospect of all time. He has the ugliest hairstyle I've ever seen, but you know the story. He went to Ohio state and then he didn't, wasn't super happy that it wasn't playing there. So he went to Texas. We saw him last year a little bit. He has missed some games due to injury in 2022 though. He had 2,100 yards and 17 touchdowns. Uh, he was 67 and a half percent accurate. He had only 3.6 turnover worthy percent turnover worthy throws. 3% sack rate. In 2022, he had seven attempts on the ground for, 400, for 47 yards and a touchdown. Um, he's... Overall, he was the 69th best passer in the in college football, which is which nice. Is nice, but at the same time, it could be it's, better. It's in the short game, he was 25th, and in intermediate, he was 108th, and DP was 90th. So obviously, some room to improve there. Uh, his NFL draft projection right now, this guy's really volatile, in my opinion. Late first. Yeah. May into the second round anywhere. I mean, you got to be thinking too, Arch Manning. Like, if he has one bad game, everyone in Texas is going to be screaming for Arch. Uh, yeah, and and I sh don't think they should. But <laughs> his rookie draft projection for Dynasty is late first as well. Um, he really needs a prove it season to be worth what where we have him ranked this year. So obviously, we're calling our shot a little bit by ranking him this high. He's shown flashes of being the five star he was a couple years ago, but he needs to do it consistently to be worthy of a first, late first, even a second round pick. I mean, many people. Think that with the tech, with the weapons that Texas has around him now, he will be able to take that step up. We're not super sold with where his value is now, but again, we're ranking him a little bit conservatively here. Um, and we'll see. This is kind of, a, I think Quinn, Quinn Ewers is one of the bigger question marks on this list. Yeah, Braylon Allen is going to be next to running back coming out of Wisconsin with a solid BMI, solid size at 6'2, 238 pounds. And look, Another Wisconsin guy, 1,200 yards in 2021, 1,200 yards in 2022, very consistent. And 
really the question is going to be where's his receiving upside from a fantasy perspective? Is he really going to have to do a lot of his production on the ground or can he get something consistently in the air? If you really want to comp him to someone, I guess, I mean, Jonathan Taylor kind of feels a little bit too on the nose, but neither of these two really caught the ball a lot and they run the ball really well and they both went to Wisconsin. So I guess as a college prospect, you could compare right, so him to JT. Yeah. He's a poor man's JT. Uh, an, another running back of the Wisconsin pedigree who follows the tradition of being a very powerful runner with little shown on the receiving side, powerful enough to break tackles. I, I think really like I've said multiple times, three times now, is he's going to be a bruiser running back. Don't expect much from the passing game, but hope that he can showcase a little bit so that he can get boosted draft stock in the NFL. Yeah, Donovan Edwards, running back out of Michigan. He's a junior. His BMI of 27.7. Uh, he was a five-star recruit. He was the second-ranked running back in his class. He obviously was stuck behind both Blake Corm and Hassan Haskins in 2021, and then he played alongside Blake Corm in 2022, and they kind of had that two-headed rushing attack. Last year, he had 991 yards and seven touchdowns on 140 attempts, which is seven yards per carry, which is pretty good. He also had 207 receiving yards last year and two touchdowns. He had 19 receptions. His dominator rating last year was 23 and three quarters percent and his breakout age was 19 and a half he's projected right now to go late day two in the nfl draft in dynasty rookie drafts probably late first early second um he's uh, some people would say he's the better nfl back out of the michigan backfield um better than blake corum which i think is going to add up because he's, he's going to get significantly he better draft capital he than, showed up last than year blake corum i yeah. mean he he's got a pretty good profile both as a rusher and a pass catcher so we're going to expect him to get some decent draft capital and be taken in this range of dynasty rookie drafts next year. Yep. Then Will Shipley, another running back out of Clemson this time. He's a junior, 5'11", 210, with, again, uh, below yeah. average BMI of 29. Four-star running back, fourth running back in the 2021 class. Started and led Clemson in rushing as a freshman. In 2021, he had 740 yards, and in 2022, brought that up to 1,100 yards. We like to see that improvement in production and efficiency from five to five and a half yards per carry. And some decent receipts. Receiving upside, 37 reception, receptions for 237 yards at 6.4 yards per reception. So really, if you're looking at him this season as a junior, I want to see him maintain those receptions, and I want to see him do more with that target share. I, I, I want to see his efficiency go up to about 9, 10, 11 yards per reception as a running back. That's really going to set him apart from these other prospects going into the class of 2024. If you want to compare him to someone in the NFL, Miles Sanders, he's probably going to be pretty safe. Again, showcasing some receiving upside and a decent runner. But I think his ceiling could be a little bit limited going into the NFL. Probably a day two pick. Yeah. I am honored to present to you Michael Penix Jr. as the 15th. Uh, as an Indiana nice. fan, man, I love I love <laughs> Michael Penix and I feel for him. I yeah. wish he was playing for IU. But yeah. six year senior Bummer. now, he has been in he's literally been here forever because it was ages ago he was playing at IU. Uh he had Two torn ACLs. He literally could not stay on the field, as you can't at Indiana because the football program is cursed. That's why I don't wear IU football sweatshirts on the show. Um, but in 2022, he was he had a 66% completion percentage. He had 4,600 yards and 31 touchdowns. Michael Penix Jr. is the real deal. I've known it since the, since the first time he started at IU. Like, this kid is good. And it was just a shame he had to transfer. But 74% accurate. Uh, in 2022, he had 25 rushing attempts for 113 yards and four touchdowns. So not like a super dual threat guy by any means, um, but a pretty freaking good passer. Overall, he was the 10th best passer in college football. He's projected right now in the NFL draft to go late day two or maybe into day three. So, you know, in rookie drafts and dynasty, probably like similar to what we were seeing with Hinton Hooker this year, maybe a little bit sooner than that. Yeah. And that's probably going to be a, like a similar comp from a situational standpoint. Um, you know, he's got prototypical size, but he's pretty old. Again, he's a 60 year senior uh, over at Washington. He's a skilled, he's very, I think he's a very skilled passer and he's capable of supporting many weapons. He prefers not to run and he's not very efficient when he does run. He doesn't really make mistakes passing the ball, which is nice. And he doesn't hold onto the ball for too long. So again, I think Michael Pendence Jr. has a very high ceiling. There's just some red flags, injury history. He's old, etc. But as an IU fan, I'm probably always going to elevate him higher than he should be. So Beat Penn State. Yeah, baby. All right. So do us a huge favor. That was a long video. Longer than we normally do. I mean, I guess 25 minutes isn't that In long. depth, 2024. But how about analysis. that for rookie content? Shout out to Ryan Bread on Twitter, at FFRyeBread, who prepped this video for us and did 
a ton of research. He knows these guys better than you probably know your own siblings. Yeah. So I would be following him on Twitter, again, at FF Rye Bread, and we really appreciate Ryan Bread being on the team. We appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you drop a like on the video, and make sure you're subscribed if you're not, especially if you're going to want to go into your rookie drafts next year prepared. This is the beginning. This is our preliminary rankings, and we went this in-depth. You can bet your britches we're going to have some better content coming for you as the winter months approach. We really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you later.